We welcome you and apologize for some technical difficulties. The fourth pitch of the game, a 3-0 to Drew Grego from the sophomore starter for the Junior Jays, Braden Cato. So it's three balls and one strike now to open this one up. Mike Nockenauer alongside Colton Alder to bring you all the action here from Jorgensen Park this evening. Deep ground ball to the shortstop in Garrett Anderson. And Grego able to beat out the throw to first, and he's on board with an infield single to start things off. With the way that ball was hit, it was always going to be a very tough play for Anderson there at short, and he almost got him. Initially thought they might have gotten Grego heading down, but some good hustle to end up beating it out and getting the leadoff base hit for the Thunderbirds. It was a high-powered Bellevue West offense. Hitting 3.30 as a team. Now Nick Riggs, this one to Bartholomew at second, on to Anderson at second. Unable to get the play at first. Excuse me, that is Logan Birchfield over there at second, and Garrett Anderson at short. Able to get the force at second, but Riggs able to beat out the throw to first. So it will be one down for Tyus Malinsky, the Kansas State commit and Gretna transfer. Well, last year he was one of the main pieces on that Gretna team that made state. Riggs going right with the pitch, throw down to sh second, is going to hop into center. Riggs is going to take off for third and he will get there with ease. Michael Chase behind the dish this evening for the Junior Jays, unable to gun down Riggs at second and that one kicks into the outfield so Go ahead run, just 90 feet away already for the Thunderbirds here in the top of the first. Michael Chase playing in just one of his first games this year, maybe working off some rust on that throw, and it ends up just getting away and moving the runner over to third. Is this one going to be smacked deep into center? Going back is the center fielder. It's gone! Ty Smolinski with a monster shot to center field. And just like that, it's 2-0 Bellevue West. Ty Smolinski was maybe looking to get some revenge on the Junior Jays after his season last year at Gretna got ended by prep at State, and he gets some revenge in his first chance, first swing that he has, and just hits it over the center field wall with this wind blowing out. Great start for the Thunderbirds. As you mentioned, that wind blowing to the backs of everyone from home plate out into center field. So Smolinski lifts that one high in the air and it just carries over that center field fence. And in the blink of an eye, it's 2-0 Bellevue West. Brings up Tanner Hosick, who will be on the mound for the Thunderbirds as well this evening. This one popped up, the middle of the infield. Saul calls off Cato, and there's two away. It's always an important question to see how a pitcher, especially one as young as Cato, responds to that adversity of giving up a home run in the first inning. Looking like he might try and settle in after getting that pop out. That brings up Nick Glantz. One out, -oh. up and in, and he gets, Cato gets Glantz to swing. Cato comes into this one with a 1-5 ERA. As he gets another swing and a miss there from Glantz. And one thing about Braden Cato, he throws absolute heat from the mound. Got a great fastball that's going to be his primary offering as we see him pitch this season. Another one, two from Cato. That's going to be poked out into center, and it'll get down. So Glantz is aboard with a two-out single here in the top of the first, and the Thunderbirds keep it going. And two strikes, just... Focus on making contact. He kind of just sticks his bat out and gets it over the shortstop. Enough knocking it into center field and 
Bellevue West trying to get some more runs here with a two-out rally. That was back going back to the home run. Smolinski's second long shot of the year. In just the 10th game of the 2024 campaign. Bellevue West with an eight and one record coming into this one. Junior Jays looking to stay above 500 at five and four. The 0-1 offering from Cato catches the outside part of the plate for strike two. Cato doing a good job getting ahead in the count. He kind of fell behind early on, but maybe starting to settle in a little bit more. Checks the runner back over at first. It's a Bellevue West team that loves to run over three stolen bases a game from their base runners. As Glantz takes off with this one, as this one is smoked foul. And it will remain 0-2. For Cato, you just need to keep throwing the ball in the strike zone. I know that home run might <laughs> maybe scare you a little bit as a young pitcher, but just needs to get some over and get out of the sending, avoid some free walks. Fastball high and away for ball one. <laughs> Glance over there at first, the biggest threat on the base paths for the Thunderbirds, leads the team with nine stolen bases on the air. One, two. Another heater upstairs, and the count now even at two and two. Cato's two two is outside, and the count now full to Johnny Barrientos. Cato looking to get out of the inning with no more than two runs of damage. Swirling wind, as indicated by our American flag out in center. And the payoff pitch now from Cato is upstairs. Glance went with the pitch. It doesn't matter. Barrientos will reach on a walk. So now two on with two outs for Colin Flores. As Bellevue West continues. Their offense here in the top of the first, and Michael Chase will trot out to have a word with Braden Cato. Yeah, Chase maybe trying to settle down Cato's nerves a little bit. Bit of a rough first inning, but he needs to settle in, get this Junior Jays team some good innings. With a speedster like Glantz at second, anything that gets down in the outfield is pretty much going to bring him in. Flores with six RBIs on the year. Golden opportunity to add to that total right here as this one is fouled off to the left side. Cool, windy evening here in early April. Temperatures hovering around 50, but as we've already seen, that wind 17 miles an hour and gusting up to 30. Here's the offering from Cato. Nick Glantz doing a good job over there at second. Making sure that Cato stay, pays, pays attention to him, tries and throw him off a bit. As this one slapped up the middle, it's gonna get down. Around third coming home is Glantz. There's not going to be a throw home. And an RBI single from Colin Flores makes it 3 nothing Thunderbirds here in the top of the first. And this Bellevue West team could have left this inning with two runs and felt happy about it. But with two outs, they string together a single and a walk. And at that point, Flores just needs to get that ball down in the outfield. Ends up bringing in the third run. And now it looks like this Junior Jays Infield is going to talk some things over. 
As we mentioned, Bellevue West with a very strong offense. Only loss coming to Elkhorn South in extra innings. Eight and one on the season as mentioned and proving to be one of the state's top teams here early in this one. And for a Creighton prep team that is a lot on the younger side, around half of their active roster consists of sophomores. Game against an opponent like Bellevue West is going to be an important one for them. They lost by only a run to both Millard West and Lincoln East, two of the two teams in the state title game last year. Maybe we'll get to continue that success against some of the state's best teams. As that brings Cole Madden to the dish, and he pops his first pitch foul. Both Michael Saul and Michael Wheelock out there in deep right field foul territory, racing after that one, unable to get to it. Wanda Madden is upstairs. Madden is 16th plate appearance on the year, batting 333 so far. Appearing in his ninth game this year. Here's the 1-1, one, it's fouled away to the right side and the count now to one and two. You know, one, two, you just need to get this one pitch, get out of the inning. It's been a rough first, but if you just hang in there and get out of this inning with just this as the damage, you can work for these next couple innings and we get some critical frames for this. That one in the dirt, taking off and trying to get to third is Barrientos, and he slides in safely, able to get the hand under the glove of Tony Coniglio over there at third. So now runners on the corners with two away. Heads up base running there. Gives Bell West a for sure chance at getting this runner in. And now they got the runner hung up at second in a pickle. That's Colin Flores. As they're keeping an eye on Barrientos on the third base line and they will tag Flores out on the base paths, and Barrientos will not come in to score, but not before Bellevue West brings across three in the top half of the first as they lead it 3 nothing, heading to the home half of the first. Junior Jays look to respond here early in this one.
We welcome you back here to Jurgensen Park for our Class A Baseball on CPSN. Bellevue West brings across three on four hits in the top half of the first. They lead it 3 nothing. as now the Junior Jays will get their first crack at offense and the first pitch is fouled off the ankle of Henry Bartholomew. So he'll try and walk that one off, but that one stings. It looks like he's gonna be all right though. Let's take a quick look at the starting pitcher for Bellevue S. It's Tanner Hosick in his third appearance this season. 1-0 record and one save with a 2-3-3 ERA. 10 strikeouts and five walks over six innings of work. And he quickly starts 0-2 to the Junior Jays leadoff man. O2 pitch, swung on and fouled back. Bartholomew still wincing in pain after he fouled that first pitch off of his shin slash ankle area. Nonetheless, it remains 0-2. Swing and a miss. And Bartholomew is down on strikes. And a good first out there for Tanner Hosek. Good start for Hosek, just gets ahead early on and ends up finishing him off in just four pitches. It's the type of start that you need in a game like this that's going to be this high intensity. That brings up the sophomore in Charlie Ziola. One of those sophomores you mentioned. And a team full of young talent. Ziola gets the nod, hitting second this evening. Fouls the first two pitches he sees off, and it's 0-2 quickly. Zayola, the left fielder this evening. His 0-2 is fouled off. Something interesting early on, Hosick has thrown seven pitches, and all of them have been strikes. He's locating the ball really well, and that's been a big fragment of his success so far. The 0-2 once more. This one's going to be slapped up the middle. That's going to be deep into center over the head of Aiden Enzer out there in center. Zayola will pump the brakes over at second, and he's got himself a one-out double here in the bottom of the first. Ziola just puts his bat on the ball and it gets it in the center field. We've seen him with that gap-to-gap -gap power typically to the opposite field so far this year and he shows it off once again. Just gets that ball down and extra base hit to start off a Junior J rally. Ziola with his third double of the season. Puts himself in scoring position for Michael Saul. Saul batting 400 on the year with five RBIs. Looking to add to that total here with a runner in scoring position in the bottom of the first and he swings over strike one. It's gonna be a quick recovery time for him. He pitched five innings in the opening game of that doubleheader versus Rockhurst, ended up leading the Junior Jays to a 10 to four victory. One, one outside. Good take there from Saul, thought about it, but able to hold back his swing. As you mentioned, the 10-4 win over Rockhurst yesterday in Kansas City. Second game of the doubleheader got underway, but eventually called due to weather. Another pitch outside, and another check swing held back from Saul. Now he's got a hitter's count at 3-1. and one. Junior Jays working the count in their favor is going to be a big offensive focal point for them as this year goes along. So that one is upstairs for ball four. And after the 
Strikeout to lead things off. Junior Jays able to put two aboard here with one away, and it's Logan Birchfield, the second baseman, batting cleanup tonight, who will step to the plate. There's a big gap over the second baseman in right center field. Something you might want to look to attack if you're Birchfield. Birchfield, a 290 hitter to open up the year. Primarily has played shortstop, but will slot in as the second baseman this evening. Junior Jays lineup that has seen a lot of assortment and changes throughout the year. And once again, as we mentioned, a lot of young talent. And so many guys that can play so many different positions. Has a good breaking ball there from Hosick. And he's up 0-2 on Logan Birchfield. I mean, you look at it, most of the guys on varsity this year for prep weren't on varsity last year. This coaching staff is trying to figure out who slots in best where and how they can put the best lineup together and seeing that positional shuffling in the lineup today with Anderson getting the start at shortstop and Birchfield getting it at second. Even with Coniglia, who's been primarily the catcher to start the year for the Junior Jays, at the hot corner at third this evening. 0-2 to Birchfield is going to be shot into left through the 5-6 gap on the left side. Around third coming home is Ziola. He will score. And the Junior Jays get one of the runs back. And an RBI single from Logan Birchfield. It's 3-1. Birchfield just does a good job getting his bat on the baseball. Gets it in the left field, and at that point, Ziola Speed just does the rest. Some good hitting there from the Junior Jays. So it brings to the plate senior Michael Wheelock, one of the few guys on this squad returning from last year's state qualifying team. Wheelock hitting 400 to start off the year on this Junior Jays squad that's hitting just a tad under 300 as a, as a team. And Wheelock takes outside for ball one. Yeah, we've seen a major jump from Wheelock so far this year. He kind of struggled at the plate a little bit last season. Had just a 460 OPS, but almost matching that in his batting average early on this season. As this one shot to the right side, Second baseman on to second as they'll get the force with Birchfield at second. So it'll be two away with runners on the corners for Liam Smithberg. That's Jake Smolinski over there at second and Ty Smolinski over there at short. On the 4-6 fielder's choice or the second out of the inning. With Smithberg up at the plate, he's been arguably perhaps second best hitter this season on base percentage over 600. Just looking to get on here and maybe bring in a run. So he'll take the first pitch he sees for strike number one. Smithberg 381 on the year. has swapped places with Saul, Michael Saul consistently over there at first base as he takes a close ball there on the outside part of the plate for ball one. Good plate discipline there from a young, a young bat in Smithburg and it's 1-1. As he'll get a hold of this one, Smolenski on to first as that will retire the side. Junior Jays get one run back. That will be the end of the first. Thunderbirds with a 3-1 lead as we head to the second here from Jurgensen Park. You're watching CPSN.
I'll give you back to Jurgensen Park. First inning full of offense from both sides. Ty Smolinski with a two-run shot. That opened up the scoring. And then two more runs scored. One on each side, and it's 3-1. Bellevue West with the lead as we open things up here in the top half of the second. With Braden Cato throwing to the catcher in Cole Madden. Cato had a rocky start to this ball game, but he's got to just settle in. Second inning is a new inning. You can't remember what happened in the first. Just focus on getting these three outs and leaving with no runs allowed. Madden skies that one foul. Back behind us to the left side. So it'll be Madden, Enzer, and then the top of the order in Gregor. Gregor, excuse me, for the Thunderbirds and a breaking ball that catches Madden off guard and a good first out there from Braden Cato with the backwards K. It's an absolutely filthy pitch. I think Madden thought it was going to hit him and ends up just drifting back into the strike zone and just a great pitch to get that first out of the inning. As now it brings up Aiden Enzer, the sophomore center fielder. Drew Grego, the leadoff man on deck for the Thunderbirds as strike two is blown by Madden. A great pitch there from Cato. Now the 0-2. Swung on and chopped foul. Ends are able to get a piece of that one and stay alive. We've seen that heater get quite a few swings and misses early on from Cato. I feel like he's kind of trusting it more as this game goes along and almost got a nasty swing and a miss. As he seemed to have slipped there, Cato might have lost his footing a bit on his pull down. Nonetheless, it's 1-2. Another heater that rides inside for ball two. As that, another breaking ball. This time catches the outside part of the plate. Another looking strikeout for Braden Cato, and there's two away for the top of the order in Drew Grego. Getting those two guys at the bottom of the order out is huge because you don't want to leave anyone on for the top of this Bellevue West order. We saw what damage they could do last inning and just some big outs from Cato to put himself in a good position here this inning. So it brings to the plate Drew Ge Grego, who reached on an infield single back in the first and came around to score on the Smolenski home run. But now finds himself behind in the count, 0-2. Oh the pitch from Cato, a heater that rides up. As you mentioned, Cato going back to that fastball very often. As this time it's a off-speed pitch that tails away and Cato strikes out the side and blanks the Thunderbirds in the top half of the second. We'll head to the bottom half here on CPSN. 3-1 Bellevue West.
we welcome you back here to Jurgensen Park. Bellevue West leading Creighton Prep 3-1, to one, entering the bottom half of the second inning. But Creighton Prep, after getting a run in the bottom half of the first, got a scoreless top half of the second, looking to get some runs back as Tony Coniglio takes strike one from the Bellevue West Turler and Hosek. Now a swing and a miss from Coniglio. Has Hosek up 0-2. That one upstairs for ball one. Good eye there from the Junior Jays third baseman. Not usually his primary position. He's been the Junior Jays backstop for most of the year. He takes another one outside of the zone. Hitting 276 on the year so far. Along with seven RBIs. And three straight pitches out of the zone for Hosick. Count rides full. Payoff pitch is going to be check swung and chopped to second, tossed onto Hosick for out number one. Looked like that one might have caught Coniglio a bit off guard. Kind of a half-hearted swing there, just get the bat on the ball. Ends up going in play and a bit of bad luck for him up at the plate. So it brings the catcher in Michael Chase to the dish. Seen Chase get a lot more playing time last year than he has this year so far. Just four plate appearances in the early going. This one is chopped on to Smolinski at second and the 4-3 put out for the second out of the inning. Much more defensive second inning as opposed to the four runs that came across in the first. And it brings to the plate the bottom of the order, Garrett Anderson who homered in his last appearance here at Jurgensen. He looks off the first two pitches he sees for a 2-0 count. And when Anderson hit that home run Versus Millard South, the wind was blowing out, and now the wind blowing out yet again today. Could be looking to take advantage of that same thing. As this one going to be popped to right center, and that one is over the fence and gone. Same spot. same spot as he did it last time. And for the second time in three, four games, Garrett Anderson goes yard and cuts the lead down to one. It's 3-2 Bellevue West now. Bet he wishes he could hit here every game. Back-to-back -back games at Jurgensen Park with a home run for the sophomore. and Happened in the second inning both times. Gets that one over the wall and cuts it down to a one-run game. So it brings back to the plate, the top of the order in Henry Bartholomew. Looking to keep this inning alive. Great first pitch there from Hosick for strike one. Big part of that top of the first was how Cato responded to that home run. He gave up a few base runners, but didn't seem to be out of a lack of confidence. It'll be interesting to see if Hosick echoes more of the same. Great plate discipline from Bartholomew. So he works the count to three and one. Oh, 
Pitch from Hosick rides inside. And a five pitch walk from Henry Bartholomew keeps this inning alive. And brings up Charlie Zaiola. Saw Zaiola last time get a double to the opposite field. Looks like Bellevue West is kind of playing him more that way. Hosek painting the outside corner on his first pitch to Zaiola. Looking to keep this inning alive for the Junior Jays in the bottom half of the second who have cut the lead down to just one. As that one will kick away from Madden behind home plate and up to second into scoring position moves Henry Bartholomew. Henry Bartholomew is second on the team with six stolen bases. Uses his speed to that advantage of the Junior Jays here. Just moves up 90 feet on a ball that most runners wouldn't be able to advance on. As that one fouled away by Zaiola. Looking to drive in his fifth run of the season. Here on a one two, that one upstairs. Everyone set the two two from Hosick is fouled off to the backstop and Zayola stays alive. Thing we've seen with Zayola all year is when he gets his bat on the ball and he squares it up really well. It's just damage. And looking to do some of that here. There's another pitch. He skies foul. The count will remain at two and two. Pitch from Hosek. This one gonna be chopped to Smolinski in deep shortstop territory, trying to scoop it over at first is Riggs. He can't dig it out. So Bartholomew, who didn't stop, comes around to score on the error. And the Junior Jays have tied this one up in the bottom of the second at three apiece. It's a great showing of hustle on the base pass by the Junior Jays. Ziola just running hard down the line. Forces a bit of a tough throw from Smolinski. As it gets away, Bartholomew just never stopping on the base paths. Runs hard home. As this one skied high into center, under it is Enzer, and he will make the catch to end the inning. But the Junior Jays bring across two more and knock this one up at three apiece. We'll head to the third here with a brand new ball game on CBSN. Bellevue West had a 3-0 lead after the top half of the first, but it's only taken two frames for the Junior Jays to crawl right back into this one. We've got ourselves a tie ball game at three apiece. 
As we start the top half of the third here from Jurgensen Park, Mike Nockenhauer alongside Cole Nalder on a chilly early April evening here in Omaha. Braden Cato back out there to pitch to the two hitter and Nick Ricks. And the wind blowing out to center field. We've already seen that have a huge impact on this game so far. Smolinski and Anderson getting fly balls that got out of the ballpark on virtue of the wind. Clearly making a big impact early on in this ball game. And Riggs quickly finds himself up in the count, 3-0. Cato with a 1-2-3 second inning where he struck all three batters he faced out. But a four-pitch walk to open up the top half of the third will bring back to the plate Ty Smolinski, who homered back in the first to open up the scoring on a towering shot to center field. He comes back up with a runner on in Riggs at first. Junior Jays outfield is playing him very deep. Left fielder Charlie Ziola is about at the warning track out there in left field. Is this one going to be skied into left? And over to make the catch is Ziola. Had to fight the wind a bit there, but able to get under it for out number one. Riggs will retreat to first. And it'll bring Tanner Hosek, the starting pitcher, back to the plate for his second plate appearance of the evening. Smolinski almost had another one, just got a little bit too far under it. Got it up in the air, but just not enough to get it over Ziola and big first out of the inning for Cato. As Riggs going with the pitch, this throw is going to sail over the head of Logan Birchfield at second, but Bartholomew right there to back things up and prevent Riggs from advancing any further than second. That was a very similar play to the one where Riggs stole second base in the first inning. Just took off a bit of an errant throw, but this time Bartholomew there to back it up, prevent any further damage. That pitch in there catches part of the plate. These Thunderbird base runners very lively on the base paths. As you can see Riggs, a lot of movement with his lead. Here's the 1-1, one, one. breaking ball just upstairs. Osik over one on the day, popped out to first in his first at bat in the first inning. So he's granted time right before Cato delivers the 2 1. On 2 1 with a right handed hitter, maybe a good count for Riggs to take off. So that one. A fastball just high. Now Hosick with a hitter's count, 3-1. With a runner in scoring position. As Bellevue West looks to reclaim the lead here in the top of the third. Three one rides high. And second walk of the inning puts two aboard with one away. For Drew, excuse me, for Nick Glantz. And some of the infielders coming over to have a chat with Cato. He's yeah. up to 53 pitches on the evening so far. You have to wonder how much 
the wind is affecting these pitchers, not just in terms of fly balls leaving the yard, but in other ways as well. I mean, Cato lost his hat on that pitch. Maybe the wind affecting his control a little bit. Seen it with Hosek as well. Maybe these two pitchers getting flustered a little bit by the elements. As mentioned, brings Nick Glantz to the plate. Had an RBI single back in the first. As Cato tries to check the runner back at second. One away here in the top of the third. Bellevue West offense threatening once again as Cato's control seems to be fluctuating slightly here in the third inning of work for the sophomore. Two zero is high and popped up. On the left side, underneath it is Coniglio. He'll make the catch, and there's two away. So a big second out there for Braden Cato in the prep defense. Able to pop Nick Glantz up. And bring up Johnny Barrientos, who walked back in the first. Riggs will take off from second. Throw down to third is not in time. Riggs using his speed. And moves 90 feet closer to a go-ahead run for the Thunderbirds. Riggs was kind of jittering around that entire last at bat. Ends up just using his speed on that one and you have to wonder if maybe he wasn't bluffing. He was jumping around second base. Riggs already with three stolen bases on the evening. Puts him to eight on the year. Which is good for second on the team. Barrientos fouls this one away. Back for strike number two. On one, two for Cato, you might have to go back to what worked for you last inning. He got those three strikeouts all on breaking balls. As he'll do another, he'll throw another breaking ball here, and it's strike three called to end the top half of the third. Couple base runners, but no damage done. It remains three to three, heading to the home half of the third here on CPSN. Don't go anywhere.
welcome you back. And a tie ball game headed to the bottom of the third. It's Logan Birchfield, the second baseman, to lead things away. Tanner Hosek back out there for his third inning of work. He's given up three runs, only two of them earned over six outs, four hits, two walks, and a strikeout. Here so far in this one. Cloudy skies. Bit of a cool, dreary night, but great baseball weather nonetheless. Two one is skied into center. Under it, making the play is Enzer. Once again, that wind proving to be a challenge for these outfielders. But center fielder able to get under it to make the catch for out number one. And brings Michael Wheelock back to the plate. As you mentioned, wind did not make that look like an easy play at all, but Enzer does a good job just coming up with it and seen that a couple times now with balls to the outfield. These outfielders kind of struggling to track it down, but in the end, no overall mistakes have been made so far. And that seems to be why this game has been so close. One error on both sides. But overall, some great baseball being played for both of these squads. Two teams expected to compete for a state tournament spot come middle of May. Find themselves in a 3-3 ball game. As that one catches the outside part of the plate and Michael Wheelock will sit down with a backwards K on three pitches from Tanner Hosick. And there's two away in the bottom of the third. Just some great location from Hosick. The way the strike zone's been called tonight, you might want Wheelock to swing at that one, but in the end it ends up just being a backwards K in the second out of the inning. Hosick really integrating that breaking ball into his rotation. And he's been producing with it so far. Lots of swings and misses and a lot of corners painted. 0-2 now to Liam Smithberg. Goes now heater high and away for ball one. With Smithberg, he's looking to run this pitch count up. He's a very patient hitter up at the dish. Looking to use that to his advantage here. Hosick up to 57 pitches on the evening. Not necessarily the most ideal pitch count for either one of these starters, with Cato already being up to 60 respectfully, respectively, as that one in the dirt gets Smithberg to swing. They're gonna, looks like they're going to Say it was a foul ball. Home plate umpire originally called strike three swinging, but Smithberg immediately in disagreeance. And they're going to say it was a foul tip by Smithberg, so he will stay alive. And the Thunderbird defense will have to get back out to their positions as the count remains at two and two. Two-two, swung on and missed. And now the 
Thunderbirds defense can head back to the dugout. A one, two, three inning from Hosick. And both teams go scoreless in the third. It remains three to three. Don't go anywhere here on CPSN. We'll be right back. This one all knotted up at three. As we head to the fourth inning of play, it's Colin Flores to lead things off for the Thunderbirds. An RBI single back in the first. Let's add on that third run. The opening frame for Bellevue West. He leads things off here in the top of the fourth. Also doubled as the final out of the inning after a weird base running play where he got caught stealing on what looked like a bit of trickeration from the Thunderbirds. Two off from Cato. Heater outside for ball three. Still no... Activity in the Junior Jays bullpen, but Cato starting to creep up there with 63, now 64 pitches as that one catches the outside part of the plate for strike one. Cato's longest outing this year so far, three and a thirds innings. Getting up there when it comes to innings as well. Kind of getting into some uncharted territory for him. As that one misses the zone. And a leadoff walk issued to Colin Flores. Now batting for the Thunderbirds, number 13, Cole Madden. Now the catcher, Cole Madden. Now near the bottom of the lineup for the Thunderbirds. Now there looks to be some action over in the Junior Jays bullpen. Looks to be sophomore Easton Lux. Cato deals and this one, first pitch swinging by Madden is driven into left. Flores will hold up at second. Uh, Madden will single on a line drive through the 5-6 gap on the left side. And that'll bring out pitching coach Kyle Schneider for the Junior Jays. Have a talk with Braden Cato, who's now up to 66 pitches on the evening. Maybe trying to calm him down a little bit. As mentioned several times, Braden Cato, very young pitcher. Doesn't have much experience at the varsity level. In these type of situations just need to calm the young pitcher down and get in, into a bit more of a rhythm.
So the single for men will bring bottom of the order, Aiden Enzer. Thunderbirds threatening now with two on with no outs as Enzer shows bunt and fouls it off, possibly hit him, but nonetheless it will be strike one. That was a bit of an up and in fastball on that bunt attempt. Best pitch to attack a hitter with when they're showing bunt. And there ends up just fouling it back. It'll be interesting to see if he goes back to that if Enzer still shows bunt. Yeah, Kato trying to jam Enzer if possible. First baseman Michael Saul playing up there on the right side. An attempt to cut down any bunt attempt from Bellevue West. Big gap there on the left side in between short and third. Enzer gets the bunt down, but it's foul. And quickly 0-2. So on an 0-2 count, it's advised not to bunt with two strikes, but do you still show bunt here? Enzer's lining in at the nine hole in this lineup. Junior Jay's not shifting him anymore. O2 is going to be chopped up the middle. Anderson will just throw it on to first for the out. So now one away with runners on second and third for the Thunderbirds. And now the top of the order comes back to the plate in Drew Grego. In the end, Enzer ended up doing his job despite the fact that he couldn't get the bunt down. Ends up delivering the same result as a bunt. Both runners moving up in the scoring position, and now with the infield shifted in, anything that gets down in the outfield probably brings home both runners. This is one, Grego, as that one, Coniglio tried to get him at home as he airmails it over. Now Chase will throw down to second, trying to get Grego as he will. So a wild turn of events there. It was grounded to third. Coniglio tried to cut down the runner Scoring at the plate, who comes home to score on an error. But Michael Chase able to cut down Grego, trying to extend to second. So after all that, it's now 4-3 Bellevue West as Madden moves up to third. And Flores comes home to score. That one gets away from Cato. You got to stay settled in after that wild sequence of events. Just get this out because you don't want Smolinski coming up with a pair on. Yeah, Smolinski obviously <coughs> showed why he's a power threat early on, making his presence felt immediately with a first inning home run. As Riggs swings over that one. Cato now to 73 on his pitch count as Laux continues to warm up in the prep bullpen. That one misses outside in a hitter's count now. Or one of the best bats on the Thunderbirds squad. That one rides inside and Riggs will reach on a walk. So now runners on the corners with two away. For Ty Smolinski. Just a great at bat from Riggs. His experience as a senior knows that all the pressure 
is on the pitcher there and just wisely takes a walk, and that brings up biggest threat in this Bellevue West lineup in Smolinski. As mentioned, the Kansas State tr commit and Gretna transfer. The 0-1. This one gonna be ripped into the gap and it's going to get down into score is Madden. Around third coming home is Riggs. Smolinski will stay at second. It's a two run double. Make it 6-3 Bellevue West. Ty Smolinski, one of the best bats in the state and he just gets that one down in the gap. Some great hitting on his part and with the speed of these Bellevue West runners, both runs coming into score. Already a three RBI night, excuse me, four RBI night for Ty Smolinski. So he brings across the third Bellevue West run, second and third Bellevue West run of this fourth inning to put Bellevue West in front six to three. Riggs able to use his speed to score all the way from first. And now it's Hosick. Fouls that one off. And lands on the press box here at Jorgensen. Cato just needs to get this one last out. Laux will almost certainly come in for the fifth. Just get out of this inning and help this Junior Jays bullpen conserve some strength. Off speed there, gets a weak foul ball off of Hosek. As you said, Cato just trying to get that final out and get out of this fourth inning without any more damage. As the T-Birds have brought across three more to make it 6-3. Heater upstairs for ball two. Looks like there's some motion in the Bellevue West bullpen as well. The 2-2. Breaking ball down and away, and the count rides full. Payoff pitch from Cato. Grounded up the middle, fielded by Anderson. On to first. Catch made by Saul and retires the side, but Bellevue West with another three spot here in the fourth. Makes it a 6-3 ball game as we're halfway home through this one. It's 6-3 Bellevue West here on CPSN.
welcome you back. It's Tony Coniglio to lead things off. First pitch he sees is chopped to Smolinski at second and on for out number one as rain has begun to fall here at Jurgensen. We've already seen the conditions have a big impact so far today and could be the case yet again. This one skied high by Chase and on to make the catch is the right fielder Barrientos and quickly two away. That is about the best start possible you can get to an inning for Hosick. Two pitches in and he gets two outs. Now with the bottom of the Junior Jays order still at the plate in a good position to get out of the standing relatively unscathed. Brings the bottom of the lineup in Garrett Anderson back to the plate. Homeward in the bottom of the second to tie things up. Or excuse me, to cut it to one. Eventually his offense able to tie things up, but after the top half of the fourth, Seems to be a bit of a wintry mix. Coming down as it's started to come down even heavier. The one, two to Anderson is upstairs. The thing with this rain, it doesn't look to be a light drizzle either. It's really coming down. Anderson fouls this one away. Looks like the winds died down at least a little bit. Now the 2-2 two, two. in the dirt, count full. This will be a massive 3-2 because Hosick doesn't want to put the nine-hole guy on for the top of this Junior Jays order that's done pretty well against him so far. Payoff pitch, catches the outside part of the zone for strike three. And Tanner Hosek goes one, two, three in the bottom of the fourth. All the momentum on the side of the Thunderbirds as they lead it six, three after four. We'll take a break, we'll be right back here on CPSN.
Bellevue West with three runs in the top half of the fourth. Currently doubling up the Junior Jays as they hold a 6-3 lead. New pitcher now in for Creighton Prep. His first appearance on the year is the sophomore, Nolan Going. We saw Nolan Going get a few relief appearances on varsity as a freshman. Was also on the varsity football team as one of the backup quarterbacks to Tony Caniglio during the regular season. Gets his first action of this current baseball season. As it's Nick Glantz to lead things off, he pops this one into foul territory and Caniglio unable to make the catch over on the left side. So now Glance with a second chance, the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss, or a high fastball from going. Haven't really gotten to see what going's repertoire is so far this year. Interesting to see what he comes out with here today. Breaking ball there on a 1-2. A lot of sweep on that pitch from going. Now 2-2. Two, two. Outside, Glance nearly bit on it, but holds back and the count now full. Big off pitch from going. This one's to be chopped over to the left side and it's going to Remain over there on the left side and Glance will reach on an infield single. That was pretty much an impossible play to make for either the third baseman Coniglio or the shortstop in Anderson. Ball just got hit into the perfect location by Glance and he gets on with one out and as a base stealing threat, excuse me, zero outs and Good start for the Thunderbirds this inning. Precipitation has died down slightly. It's not coming down nearly as hard as it was in the bottom half of the fourth, but still a bit of a trickle. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Glance down to second, and he's cut down by Michael Chase behind the dish. Good throw, good tag. And the base stealing threat is no more. He's thrown out by the prep baps backstop. Now one away. Bit surprised that Chase was able to get him a breaking ball, typically a good pitch to run on, but ends up just cutting him down. Great throw from Chase. Going goes back to that breaking ball and he gets Johnny Barrientos to foul one off and he's up in the count 0 and two. O2 pitch. Breaking ball rides high. He's gone to that breaking ball the first three pitches of this at bat. Maybe tries to attack back with a fastball or a changeup here. One two is down and away. Two two is going to be struck up the middle. Bartholomew unable to make the play. That one lined in the perfect spot. Right up the middle, and Barrientos reaches on a one out single here in the top of the fifth. It's just some good hitting on his part. Stays alive in the count. Despite there being two strikes and ends up just knocking it into center field. Seen a few drop in front of Bartholomew due to the wind and 
Ends up getting a single. As that one stung down the left field line. Foul by Colin Flores. One one from going. Off speed pitch, a great change up there. And it's one and two. It's a great change of speeds on Goings part. Just caught Flores way off guard. Might want to go back to the heater here, catch him even further off guard. One, two from going. Runner goes. This one going to be popped into left center. That's going to be trouble. And back on the warning track, able to make the play is Bartholomew. They're going to try to get it back in to first. Nearly got him, but Barrientos able to get back to first in time. But what a play out there in center from Henry Bartholomew. Able to chase it down and make the catch for the second out. Ball that would have surely been extra bases and in all likelihood scoring Barrientos. That was an absolute beauty out in center field from Bartholomew. Just tracks it down. Makes a great play at the wall. Difficult to track this ball with the wind, but he does a good job with it there and ends up getting the second out of the inning. Massive play there from Bartholomew. Brings up the catcher and Cole Madden. It's one for two on the day. Singled and scored so far this evening. Looks like they're going to talk some things over. As that is not something you want to see. As going will come out of this game pointing to his throwing arm. We're going to step aside. You're in the top half of the fifth.
Welcome you back to Jurgensen Park. New pitcher now in for the Junior Jays is senior Josh Higgins. He'll come in with two away here in the top half of the fifth. Runner goes on the pitch. No throw down to second. Count now 3 0 to the Thunderbirds catcher. It's Higgins' first appearance in about two and a half weeks. Maybe looking to shake off some rust early on. Bit of a chat at the mound. Three out of Madden. That one will be down and in for ball number four. So the Thunderbirds backstop will head down to first with a two out walk. And the bottom of the order and Aiden Enzer will come to the plate. Now with the nine hole hitter up at the dish, this is probably your best chance at getting out of the inning. Just need to put the ball in the strike zone and get this out. Get this offense back on the diamond. Breaking ball there from Higgins as he finds the zone and it's one and one. Two one pitch is swung on and missed. Count even to two and two for Josh Higgins. At this point on two and two, you, you just need to put one pitch in the strike zone and that's all you need. Pitch from Higgins. Down and in and the count runs full. Three balls and two strikes. Both runners go, swing and a miss. Enzer sat down on strikes. Junior Jays will come back to the plate as they still trail 6-3 here on CPSN.
bottom of the fifth now. It'll be the top of the order for the Junior Jays. Due up. They still trail 6-3 in this one. Maybe some pitch comms. Pitch com issues for the Thunderbirds. They'll go get that straightened out. Over on their side, it's been a strong showing from the visiting squad this evening. It's brought across three runs in the top half of the first and the top half of the fourth and route to a 6-3 lead. Their starter and Hosek still in the game. Gave up one in the first and two in the second, but he's held the Junior Jays scoreless in his last two as he's out there now for his fifth inning of work. Hosek has retired the last seven Junior Jays. However, this top of the order has matched up really well against him. Top four guys in this lineup have gotten on base six of the 12 times they faced him with Bartholomew, Ziola, and Saul, who have each gotten on against him at least once starting off this inning. Could be a bit of a treacherous frame for Hosek. For the time being, doesn't seem like there's any precipitation coming down. That wind still blowing. It's been swirling all night, but currently going from left field to right. That's been a factor in this one, both positive and negative. One one pitch. As that one just misses low for ball number two. Thunderbirds thought for certain that one was in the zone. Nonetheless, it's two one to the Junior Jays center fielder. In the dirt now, a hitter's count. Bartholomew drew a walk his last time up. Could be looking to play more patiently against Hosek. Considering how the rest of this top third has performed against him. Play on pitch now. Hosek slipped a little bit on his delivery. Might have hindered the pitch a little bit. As Bartholomew reaches on a leadoff walk to open up the home half of the fifth. 74 pitches to this point for Hosek. You wonder how that affects him as this inning is going to go along. Doesn't look to be anyone up in the Bellevue West bullpen for the moment. As that one going to get away from Madden, down to second goes Bartholomew as he'll be in there standing. So already up into scoring position with no outs is Henry Bartholomew. Here for Charlie Zayola who already has an RBI on the day. For prep, you don't need to get all of these runs back in the fifth inning. If you could get one or two across, That'd be a very successful frame for him. Big swing and a miss there from Ziola. Good cut there from the sophomore, but unable to put metal to the ball. One one now. 
This one gonna be grounded up the middle off the glove of Smolinski to the other Smolinski, but no throw. And Bartholomew will move up to third. I think they're going to call that an infield single. So now runners on the corners with no outs. And just like that, the tying run and Michael Saul comes to the plate. Saul drew a walk his first time. 06 kind of struggled with his command against this top four in the Junior Jays lineup. Three walks versus him so far. So he gets a swing and a miss from Saul on the first pitch. As another swing and a miss, and just like that, it's 0-2. Now in 0-2, you just need to focus on getting your bat to the ball here. Maybe making some chaos on the infield. As that one in there for strike three. Michael Saul is sat down with a backwards K. So big out there from Hosick. Brings up Logan Birchfield. Normally with one out, you'd consider the double play possibility, but with Birchfield's speed, that's basically out of the question. Bellevue West not really shifting at all. Playing it with a normal alignment, so no major holes on the infield. Breaking ball catches the inside part of the plate for strike one. <coughs> Painting that inside part of the plate. I wonder Birchfield. This is down low. As that one gets away from Hosick, coming to the plate, trying to score, is Bartholomew gets around the tag of Madden. The throw back to the pitcher was off the mark. No hesitation from Bartholomew racing down the third base line, able to use a swim move to get around the tag. And he makes it 6-4, Junior Jays. Very heads-up base running there from the senior in Henry Bartholomew. We've seen that a few times from prep here today. They're just taking advantage of those small little holes. And they're getting on base oh. and bringing in runs so far on the base paths. One, two to Birchfield. Fouled away and he stays alive. As that one swung on and missed, and Hosick with back-to-back -back strikeouts makes it two away here in the bottom of the fifth. Hosick doing a good job missing the Junior Jays' bats there. Getting those two strikeouts would have been huge with the runners on the corners, but with that error on the catcher, Bartholomew scoring anyway. Throw down to first. Yeah. 
Oh, one pitch. Swung on, driven to the opposite field. It's gonna get down. Rounding second, heading to third is Ziola. So Mike Wheelock with a two out single. Puts the tying run on first and brings up the go ahead run and Liam Smithberg to the plate. Wheelock just doing a good job making contact, getting it in to the opposite field and now with runners on the corners, looks like Bellevue West is gonna talk over some strategy. Eighty seven pitches so far on the night for Hosick. Have to wonder if his night seemed to come to an end after the inning. Hosick up to eighty eight pitches on the evening. Got to think that he's coming down to one of his final batters. Four and two thirds for him. Four runs, three of them earned over six hits. Six Ks and three walks. He's faced 23, soon to be 24 batters. It's been an impressive outing from the senior right-hander. Now he faces one of the best bats on this Junior Jays team, the sophomore in Liam Smithberg. The 1 0. That one's away, but a good stoppage there from Madden prevents any advancements on the base paths. Big part of what has made Smithburg so good is his ability to draw walks. Has eight walks in just nine total games played so far this season. Looking to just get on here and further a Junior J rally. Hosick with another pitch that gets away from him and it's quickly 3-0. and 3-0, have to imagine Smithberg will be taken all the way here. Especially with the Junior Jays trailing by a couple of runs. So that one misses the outside part of the plate and a four pitch walk loads the bases for Tony Coniglio. Tying run into scoring position at second. Tony Coniglio with seven RBIs on the year. Comes to the plate with two away and the bases loaded in the bottom of the fifth in a two-run ball game. He takes the first pitch low for ball one. Hosick up to 93 pitches on the day. It's really had to work to get out of this inning. and That one catches the outside part of the plate. Hosick continues to paint corners. The one and one to Coniglio. Up and away for ball two. 2-1, this is a very high intensity situation for him. With Wheelock at second, he's got some decent speed. Anything that gets down in the outfield probably brings home both runners. 2-1, in there for strike two. Hosick just one pitch away from getting out of this fifth inning jam. 96 pitches on the evening. As 
he looks to close out this fifth inning with no more than one run of damage. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and missed. Hosick sits down Coniglio on a strikeout and gets out of the jam. And the Thunderbirds maintain a two-run lead. We'll head to the sixth. Don't go anywhere here on CPSN. We've got a good one here at Jurgensen Park. Junior Jays threatened loading the bases in the bottom of the fifth, but only able to bring across one run. The Thunderbirds maintain a 6-4 lead. This will be a start off the sixth inning. Mike knocking over alongside Colton Alder here on a chilly, cool April evening in Omaha. It's Drew Grego to lead things off in the Top of the sixth for the Thunderbirds. Looking to add some insurance. It's the Junior J offense started to pick up a little more momentum over the last few innings. Beautiful breaking ball there from Higgins. Catches the outside part of the plate, and he's up in the count 0-2. Higgins got a big strikeout to end that top of the fifth inning. He hoped that gets him more settled in as this top of the Bellevue West order comes up here in the sixth. Higgins goes back to that breaking ball, but just a bit high for ball one. One, two, pitch, swung on and missed. Catches Grego lacking on an off-speed pitch. For the first out of the inning. It's a big first out getting the leadoff man out for Higgins. Needs to just kind of get in a rhythm his first appearance in a while. Now with a pair of lefty-lefty matchups coming up could be a favorable situation for him. 
Going back to that breaking ball once again. Just misses inside. The 1 0. That one outside for 3 and 0 oh now. You can't afford to fall down this way, especially with Smolinski on deck, and we've seen what damage he can do with each of his extra base hits. Three out of rigs. Check swing. They're going to say he held up. So it would be ball four. And they're going to check to the field umpire who will say that Riggs went around, so he'll have to come back. And it'll be 3 1. Yeah, it appeared to me like Riggs went, but. I'm going to have a bit of a chat with the umpires and. It looks like they're going to reset now. So instead of a walk, it'll be 3-1 to Riggs now. That one misses high and in. And after all of the confusion... Riggs will trot down to first on the base on balls. And it'll bring up Ty Smolinski, who's got four RBIs on the day. He's brought in Riggs with both of them. Has a chance to do so yet again. First time seeing a lefty arm, though. Could be something that works in Higgins' favor. Riggs, an obvious base stealing threat, has three swiped bags on the evening. Seems as if Higgins is aware of that as he continues to check over at first. One on to Smolinski, down and away, ball two. Normally on a 2-0 count, you'd focus on getting the ball in the strike zone, but with the way he's been hitting today, maybe walking Smolinski wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. So that one outside, bit of a delayed steal there from Riggs, down to second, and he'll be safe. Got Michael Chase napping there behind the dish. And Riggs swipes his fourth bag of the evening. Some great base running there from Riggs with first base open in a 3 0 count. I just put Smolinski on here. Especially with the speed threat of Riggs staying there at second.
So that one down and away for ball four. Four pitch walk to Smolenski. And he'll be on with now still one away for Tanner Hosek. No, back-to-back -back walks. That takes away the platoon advantage. Puts two on. Looks like there's going to be a bit of a mound visit. And the Junior Jays warming up Briac in the bullpen. believe they will leave Higgins in for the moment. Also some motion in the Thunderbirds bullpen as Hosex Knight likely done after 97 pitches. So Higgins will remain in the game for the time being. Here with one away in the top of the six with two on. That'll bring up Tanner Hosek to the plate. Oh for two on the day with a walk. Good pitch there from Higgins to open up this at bat. Blows a fastball by Hosek for strike one. You just need to get ahead in the count. That's been an issue. His last two batters falling behind early on. Higgins getting that first pitch strike over is a big step for him in this play appearance. As that one tried to get it to pick off attempt by Higgins over to second, sailed over the glove of Birchfield. Bartholomew tried to cut down Riggs at third, unable to do so. Both runners move up into scoring position here with only one away in the top of the sixth. Infield shifted in. Hosek may be looking to just stick it over the infield and get it down. One, one, one out. Pops it up on the right side. Going to be a tough play for whoever ends up making it. It's Wheelock who will make the catch and he'll gun it down to third, to home. As in Riggs will stay at bay at third. Great throw from Wheelock. Would have almost certainly had him at the plate. So it keeps both runners put at second and third. And now two away. Here for the Junior Jays in the top half of the sixth. Glance up at the plate, two for three, with a pair of singles, a run scored, a caught stealing, and a pop out. Brings Nick Glance to the plate. Oh. 
One out of Clance. Breaking ball up and away, 2-0. and Two zero pitch misses low. Hagen is just unable to find the zone against Glance. Three zero. That one's in there for strike one. Three one from Higgins. In there for strike number two. A big pitch there from Higgins, just getting that one in the strike zone and now on three two. Just one good pitch gets him out of this frame. Just needs to focus on getting the ball either in the strike zone or close to it. Getting Glance to swing at this thing. Two on, two out, full count. Josh Higgins. To Nick Glantz, the payoff pitch is down and in for ball four, and the bases are loaded for the Thunderbirds with two away in the top of the sixth. Off bases loaded, it's a bit more dangerous of a situation, but that does enable the force to any base. As that will be the end of the night for Josh Higgins. It'll be the senior Brady Eck to try and get out of this jam. As the Thunderbirds have loaded the bases with two away here in the top of the six. We'll step aside and introduce you to the new arm for the Junior Jays when we return here on CPSN.
We welcome you back here to Jurgensen Park. Brady Eck, the new arm for the Junior Jays, in to try and get them out of this bases loaded jam. Put two away in the top of the sixth. He'll be facing John facing Johnny Barrientos. The Thunderbirds right fielder. One for two on the day with a walk and a strikeout. That one kicks away from Chase. And into score will be Riggs. So the pass ball allows a run to come in to score. Make it 7-4 Bellevue West. It's worth noting that zero hits for the Thunderbirds in this top half of the sixth. Still able to bring across an insurance run. Extend their lead back to three. Barrientos has quickly worked himself into a 3-0 count. Three zero as that one down and away for ball four, bases loaded once again. So it brings Colin Flores to the dish. Looking to add on even more insurance. Strike one from Brady Eck. This one gonna be driven down the right field line. It's gonna get down fair. One run is in to score. Second run comes in. All the way from first to score is Barrientos. It's a three-run double for Colin Flores. Make it 10-4, Bellevue West. That's just a crushing blow for the Junior Jays. Falling behind by six mm -hmm. runs now. That's just a turn of events he can't afford to have. Rather unfortunate. So now it's Cole Madden, the catcher. After the three run bases clearing double from Colin Flores. Blown this game wide open and made it a six run, 10 4 lead for the T Birds. Swing and a miss. And you just need to focus on getting out of this inning any way you possibly can and just getting your offense back out there. One, two from Brady Eck. Misses, ball two. Sweeper. Gets Madden to strike out, but not before the Thunderbirds bring across four as they make it a 10-4 ball game. 
as we head to the bottom of the sixth on CPSN. Bellevue West with an absolute dagger of a sixth inning. Four runs. Three of them courtesy of the man who now tows the rubber for the Thunderbirds in Colin Flores. Got a bases clearing double in the top half and now comes on to pitch in relief for Tanner Hosek, whose day will end after five innings on 97 pitches. In 10 innings of action this year, Flores has a 140 ERA, 17 strikeouts to just three walks. He's been really good for the Thunderbirds so far. Duo down and away for ball number three. It'll be Michael Chase, Garrett Anderson, and Henry Bartholomew do up here in the bottom of the sixth. That one rides high upstairs. And a four-pitch walk to Michael Chase to open up the bottom half of the sixth. Good start to this frame for the Junior Jays. Just getting a man on. They're hoping to maybe pull off a miracle in these late innings, trailing by six. Chance is not good for a comeback, but, I mean, wild things tend to happen sometimes in this ballpark. One one now. Inside for ball two. Oh, 
2-1 to Anderson, catches the inside part of the plate for strike two. Two, two. Just misses outside, count runs full. Three, two, even though there's not two outs, they might be sending the runner here. Ryberg's got some legs over there at first, courtesy running for Michael Chase. Runner doesn't go, swing and a miss from Anderson. Tag applied to complete the out. And that'll be one away in the bottom of the sixth. Now top of the lineup back up for the Junior Jays. It's a big first out for Flores considering the top of the lineup's coming up. Just gets that first one and that could help him settle in and get through some innings. In three plate appearances today, Bartholomew has walked twice. Shows bunt and pulls back. Two and out. Inside for ball three. That one catches the upper part of the plate, part of the zone for strike one. That one catches the outside part of the plate and it's now a full count three and two. Payoff pitch from Flores. Fouled off to the right side. Runner goes, this one lifted high and deep into left. Back is the left fielder, he'll watch it. Clear the fence, Henry Bartholomew with a two run home run here in the bottom of the sixth. Makes it 10-6 Bellevue West. It's gonna be his second home run of the year, just gets a hold of one and pulls it in the left. Some great contact there from Bartholomew and he gets the Junior Jays some runs here. Maybe gets them back in this ball game. Bartholomew with his second homer of the year pulls the Junior Jays within four. Here with one away in the bottom of the sixth. <laughs> Brings Charlie Ziola to the plate. Sophomore with a three for three day. Three of the six hits for the Junior J offense, courtesy of Charlie Ziola. One one is fouled back. Now it's one and two. Mm. 
Big swing there from Zayola, able to get a piece of it and foul it off. That one once again fouled off by Zayola, who continues to stay alive. Just a good job fighting off pitches by Zayola, just staying alive in this count. Looking to get something that he can really do some damage with, maybe hit it into the gap. Swing and a miss. Flora is able to sit. Zayola down on strikes. Now two away in the bottom of the sixth. Brings up Michael Saul. Heater from Flores just misses outside. After two close pitches, it's 2-0 to Saul. That one rides inside, and it's 3-0. 3-0 count if Saul gets on. That put a run that kept the scheme to three on base. Junior Jays have some bats that can do some real damage as this order goes downward. Looking to maybe get a bit of a rally going with two outs. A 3 0 in there for a strike. As that one check swung by Saul in the zone for strike two. Flores just needs one good pitch to get out of this frame. Paying off pitch from Flores. Swung on and missed. Junior Jays bring across two on the Bartholomew home run, but the Thunderbirds maintain a four-run lead heading to the final frame of baseball. Here from Jurgensen Park, you're watching Class A Baseball on CPSN. here for the top half of the seventh here on CPSN. Bellevue West leads Creighton Prep 10 to six here in the top half of the seventh inning. Brady X still on the mound here for the Junior Jays. 
pinch hitter in for Bellevue West will be number 25, Will Sims, as he slots in to the nine hole of the order for Aiden Enzer. First pitch offering from the Junior Jays right hander is up high for ball one. Bellevue West pleaded four to take a six run lead in the top half of the sixth. Creighton Prep answering back with two runs in the bottom half to make it a four run game yet again. 2 0 count. Now for Sims. X2 0 up high and the count goes to 3 0. Three zero misses up high, and that is a four-pitch walk from Sims to open off the inning. That'll bring the top of the order back up. Drew Grego up at the plate. He will be followed by Riggs and Smolinski. Leadoff man gets on to open off the inning, so a bit of a dangerous situation for Eck. Pick off third to first, not in time. First pitch from Eck in there for a strike. One. That clicks back to first. O one turns into O two. Another strike there from Eck. Facing the top of the Thunderbirds order in Drew Gregor. O2 pitch, struck up the middle. That'll get down in center field. Enzer will hold up at second, and it's a single there for Grego on a O2 pitch. Just strikes it right back up the middle. So now two on with no outs for the Thunderbirds here in the top of the seventh, looking to add any sort of insurance they can. Some great hitting there from Grego. Just hits it hard back up the middle. Now two on with nobody out as Bellevue West looks to continue to add some insurance runs. Looked like Riggs was trying to show bunt there. Went over for strike one anyway. One one count. Breaking ball that catches the outside part of the plate, and it's one and two. So that one kicks away. Both runners will move up. That takes the double play out of order. And now both runners in scoring position. Believe they're going to rule that one a pass ball as it 
hit off of Chase and kicked over to the backstop. Now two in scoring position. Riggs tries to take advantage. She fouls one away. Cat remains at two and two. This one struck well into center. Back looking up. It's going to be off the wall. Into score is Enzer around third coming home. Is Grego and it's a two run double from Nick Griggs. Make it 12-6 Bell West. You have to feel like if that double by Flores in the sixth wasn't the dagger that Almost certainly was. He gets that one down over the center fielder. Bartholomew makes it a six-run lead yet again. And now still with nobody out or runners in the scoring position for Ty Smolinski, who's already driven in four runs today. Two on out of Spolinski. Still no outs here in the top of the seventh. That one misses and it's 3-0. Oh. 3-0 oh is skied back over the press box. So it'll be three and one. That fouled off, and the count now runs full at three and two. Payoff pitch going to be stung into right. It's going to get down around third. Coming home is Nick Riggs. And he will score easily, make it five RBIs on the evening for Ty Smolinski. And it's now 13 to six. Bellevue West has brought across three more in the top of the seventh. We talk about a big game from Ty Smolinski, getting some revenge on the team that eliminated his Dragons from the state playoffs last year. Gets five RBIs in this one. Now it's a seven run ball game. Breaking ball to Hosek is in there for strike one. Looking ahead, Junior Jays return here tomorrow. Host Papillion La Vista South. So a quick turnaround on a game that's been long and dragging, nearing three hours on this one.
This one going to be shot too short. On to second for one, over to first, not in time. So the 6-4 fielder's choice will give the Junior Jays their first out of the inning. And it brings up Nick Glantz to the plate. A one. Two one to glances, swung on and missed. Count even at two and two. At this point for the Junior Jays, you just need out. Get out of the inning, get your offense back out on the field. Just leave this game with as close of a score as you possibly can. That one swung on and missed for strike three, and there's two away in the top of the seventh. That'll bring on pinch hitter Eli Flanagan. Swing and a miss, and it's quickly 0-2. Heck, you just need to get out of this inning with something to sit bat. Just put the ball in the strike zone and maybe get a swing and a miss here in this situation. That one catches the outside part of the plate. Strike three. Bellevue West brings across three more in the top of the seventh. Three outs remaining for the Junior Jays. As they trail by seven, heading to the home half of the seventh here on CPSN.
Junior J is down to three outs remaining as they trail by seven. Here in the bottom of the seventh. Be Logan Birchfield to lead things off as he takes strike one. Breaking ball there from Flores is in there for a strike two. For Bellevue West, you're just looking to get out of this inning as quickly as you possibly can. Get yourselves out of here with a big win versus a young Junior Jays team. and That'd be something that they could really build upon in this season that's already been so successful for them. That one in the dirt for ball two. As we mentioned, coming up tomorrow, Junior Jays back in action here at Jurgensen as they host the Papillion La Vista South Titans here on CPSN. And then later in the week, they'll head down to St. Louis for the Jesuit Classic. Junior Jays will fall to five and five on the year. Bellevue West will improve to nine and one. That one popped into foul territory. Over there trying to make a play is Riggs. Just out of his reach. Two two to Birchfield. Breaking ball in there for strike three. What a pitch there from Colin Flores has just been lights out in relief. He's really settled in after some early struggles in the sixth. Three straight strikeouts for Flores. Bellevue West just two outs away from getting out of this ball game with a win. Mike Wheelock now steps in, swings over strike one. Another big swing and a miss, and down 0-2 is Wheelock quickly. Huh? 0-2. Oh, Pitch from Flores to Wheelock. Checks his swing. And they're gonna say he held up, so it'll be ball two. Two, two. Catches the outside part of the plate, strike three. Two strikeouts from Flores, and the Junior Jays are down to their last out. It's a tr great pitch on his part. Just catches the outer third. Now two gone in the inning. Chance to get out of it. So now it comes down to Liam Smithberg. Trying to keep this one alive. He takes strike one. Yeah. 
one one swung on and missed Flores looking to close this one out solid night all around from the Thunderbirds the one two from Colin Flores chopped up the middle Smolinski over trying to make the play nearly does and it sails over the glove of Riggs over there at first and out of play, so Smithberg will head to second. Nearly a unbelievable play there from Smolinski. Showing why he's headed to Manhattan to play for Kansas State after this season. But that one sails out of play, and Smithberg heads up to second. So now it's Tony Coniglio trying to keep this one alive. That one catches the outside part of the plate for strike two. The pitch. This one grounded to Smolinski. Throw over to first. He stretched from Riggs. He makes the catch and the play, but he is down. That ends the ball game, but now all the concern will turn to Nick Riggs, who made the stretching play to end the ball game. This is not something you want to see after a game like this. You just hope the best for him. Definitely a concerning play, but. Training staff over there tending to Riggs. We will step aside.
that will do it from Jurgensen here tonight. Just a terrible way to end things after such a great game from Bellevue West. All the concern obviously turns to their teammate, Nick Riggs, who has helped off the field. But that will do it from us here at CPSN. We thank you all so much for watching this evening. Your final score, Bellevue West gets the win 13-6. to Reminder that tomorrow evening we'll be back here from Jurgensen for the Junior Jays take on Papillion La Vista South. But from us tonight, we thank you all so much for watching and hope you have a great rest of your evening. Good night.